Hello everyone, my name is Ashinta and I am a volunteer at GB Forensics. Today I will be discussing about DNA replication dynamics, an essential process that ensures the accurate transmission of genetic information from one generation to the next. So without any further delay, we can get into the topic. Introduction DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule that carries the genetic instructions necessary for an organism's growth, development, functioning and reproduction. It acts as a blueprint that determines how living things develop and function. DNA is composed of four chemical bases, adenine, guanine, thiamine and cytosine. These bases play a crucial role in encoding genetic information. Based on their chemical structures, adenine and guanine are classified as purines, while thy thymine and cytosine are classified as pyrimidines. A nucleoside consists of a purine or a pyrimidine base covalently bonded to a sugar molecule. When we specifically talk about DNA, the sugar present is called deoxyribose. The four major deoxyribonucleosides found in DNA are Deoxyadenosine, deoxygynosine, deoxythymidine, and deoxycytosine. A nucleotide is base plus sugar plus phosphate covalently bonded together. Coming to the third point, in DNA where the sugar is deoxyribose, this unit is a deoxyribonucleotide. 3' prime to 5' prime phosphodiester bonds covalently join nucleotides together to form a repetitive sugar phosphate chain, which is a backbone to which the base is attached. So, basically, what it means that nucleotides are linked together by 3' prime to 5' prime phosphodiester bonds, which create a continuous sugar phosphate backbone. This backbone provides structural stability. Fourth point. The DNA sequence is a sequence of A, C and T, G along with the DNA molecule which carries the genetic information. Fifth point, in a DNA helix, the two DNA strands are wound around each other with the bases on the inside and the sugar phosphate backbones on the outside. DNA structure Deoxyribonucleic acid consists of two polydeoxyribonucleotide chains that are twisted around one another in a right-handed double helix structure similar to a spiral staircase. The base pairing A with T, G with C is called Chargaff's rule which states that the number of purines is equal to the number of predimins. Second point, always the two strands are complementary to each other. So the adenine of one strand will pair with the thymine of the opposite strand while guanine will pair with cytosine. The two strands in a DNA molecule run antiparallel meaning that one strand runs in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction while the other is in the 3' to 3 prime to 5' prime direction. Which means if one strand has A, the opposite strand will have T. And if one has G, the opposite will have C. The two strands run in directions which is called anti-parallel orientation. So third point, in the DNA, each strand acts as a template for synthesizing the opposite strand during the replication process. The spiral has a pitch of 3.4 nanometers per turn. Within a single turn, 10 base pairs are seen. The DNA helix completes one full turn every 3.4 nanometer within, a, within one full turn. There are 10 base pairs, meaning that every turn of the helix consists of 10 rungs in the DNA ladder. Coming to the DNA replication. The genetic information gets passed from parents to progeny by a faithful replication of the parental DNA molecules. The DNA molecules reside in one or more double-stranded DNA molecules. Some bacteriophage contains single-stranded DNA which is converted to double-stranded DNA through the replication process and then serves as a template for the synthesis of single strands identical to the parent molecule. Which means genetic information is accurately passed from parents to offsprings through the precise replication of parental DNA molecules. 
Replication of double stranded DNA is a complicated process as we know. The process results in part in part from the following facts. The facts are unwinding the helix requires an energy source. Enzymes like helicase utilize energy to separate the two strands forming a replication fork and then the single strands resulting from the unwinding tend to form intra strain base pairs. Third point, a single enzyme can catalyze only a limited number of physical and chemical reactions and many reactions are needed in replication. Fourth point, several safeguards have evolved that are designed both to prevent replication errors and to eliminate the rare errors that do occur. Both the circularity and the enormous size of DNA molecules impose geometric constraints on the replicative system and how this fit into the system has to be understood. During cell division, each daughter cell gets an exact copy of the genetic information of the mother cell. This process of copying the DNA is known as DNA replication. It has three stages, initiation, elongation and termination. If it is prokaryotes, the replication happens at binary fission because that particular time one cell divides into two. If it is eukaryotes, the replication happens at interphase. The replication occurs in S phase, which is located in interphase. In prokaryotes, the replication occurs in the cytoplasm because in prokaryotes, there is no definite shape or a structure. In eukaryotes, the replication takes place in the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, the DNA is presented. Semi-conservative model. Semi-conservative model is proposed by Watson and Crick. Each parental DNA strand serves as a template for one new strand and as each new strand is formed, it is hydrogen bonded to its parental template. Thus, replication proceeds and the parental double helix unwinds. The reason behind two copies of DNA from one parent DNA is semi-conservative. The parent DNA gets into the process of denature where the two strands separate, the new strand attached to the denatured strand and could separately form daughter DNA. So, it explains about the new synthesized uh, Strand. In the semi conservative model of DNA replication, each original DNA strand serves as a template for a new complementary strand. As a result, each daughter DNA molecule consists of one original strand and one newly synthesized strand. Origin of replication Origin of replication is nothing but the replication where it takes place, is the origin. Origin of replication. Ori is uh, origin of replication and Ori contains five copies of the DNA sequence that act as a binding site for the DNA. A. Ori is an AT rich site. The double strand DNA is separated into single strands due to weak bonds. AT has two bonds whereas CG has three bonds and there are 13 base pairs. The origin of replication can be identified effortlessly due to the presence of 13 base pairs which are repeated three times. Origin of replication diagram shows the process where the replication happens and the three points as we discussed before. Replication recognition site. The replication recognition site which is located below the origin of replication has 9 base pairs and is repeated 4 times. RRC is also called DNA A box. It's an enzyme where it recognizes to synthesize the replication. Unwinding of DNA. The DNA helicase unwinds the strand and topoisomerases, gyrases and helicase all unwind the DNA. Relief of supercoil is done by topoisomerases. Type 1 makes the transient break in one strand of DNA and it's immediately revealed after the coiling is done. Type 2 introduces double strand breaks. Rotation occurs and the breaks are released. Gyrase is a bacterial type 2 topoisomerase that acts on closed circular DNA. 
helicase separates the strands of DNA without a cut but using energy from the hydrolysis of ATP. So generally during DNA replication the double helix needs to be unwound so that each strand can be copied. Several enzymes work together to achieve this. Helicase. This enzyme separates the two strand of DNA double helix by breaking the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs creating a replication fork. Topoisomerase. As the DNA unwinds it can become overly twisted creating tension ahead of the replication fork. Topoisomerase helps to decrease the tension by making temporary cuts in the DNA strands. Topoisomerase type 1 makes a transient break in one strand of the DNA to relieve supercoiling. Topoisomerase type 2 allowing the DNA to pass through itself to resolve tangles and supercoils. The DNA gyrase, a specific type of type 2 topoisomerase found in bacteria, gyrase introduces negative supercoils into DNA which helps in relieving the tension. Replication bubble. DNA helicase unwinds the short region of the DNA helis which creates a replication fork. Premise initiates synthesis of short RNA segments before new DNA strands can be synthesized. Premise adds short RNA primers to the separated strands. DNA polymerase enzyme synthesis a new strand of DNA by adding nucleotides to the RNA primers. The single strand binding proteins binds to the single stranded DNA regions to prevent from re annealing. Replication fork. The product of the reaction is two dotted double stranded DNA. Thus, replication is semi conservative. The origin of replication DNA associated with the single origin is called. A replication bubble or replication eye and consists of two replication forks moving in opposite directions around the DNA circle. Elongation is a crucial process. Replication happens in both strands simultaneously and the process can be done fastly. Double stranded DNA is anti parallel. One, strands, one strand runs 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Newly new DNA is created against each template strand as the original double stranded DNA splits open at a replication fork. Therefore, one might expect new DNA to be made 5 prime to 3 prime for one daughter strand and 3 prime to 5 prime for the other daughter strand. However, all DNA polymerase makes DNA only in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and never in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction. It is very important that only the DNA polymerase makes 5 prime to 3 prime direction. The template strand with 3 prime to 5 prime starts. The DNA is made in continuous pieces in the correct 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This new DNA is called the leading DNA strand. On the other template strand, DNA polymerase synthesizes short pieces of new DNA in the 5' to 3' direction and then joins these pieces together. The small fragments are called Okazaki fragments and the new DNA strand which is made by this discontinuous method is called the lagging strand. Gram shows the elongation process loop formation leading strand and lagging strand loop formation it changes the direction of the strand and the leading strand primer attached only at first continuous and fast process lagging strand discontinuous slow process which has multiple primers and is also called okazaki fragments Polymerization. DNA polymerization is the process of synthesizing new DNA strands during replication. DNA polymerase 3 is the primary enzyme responsible for replication, while DNA polymerase 1 fills gaps by replacing RNA primers with DNA. DNA polymerase 1 also has proofreading to correct mismatched nucleotides and 5', 5 to 3' exonucleus activity to remove RNA primers. Additionally, it plays a role in NIC translation, repairing damaged DNA by replacing faulty segment. 
Termination is the last uh, process of replication. In prokaryotes, tercites, termination sequence which means signal the end of DNA replication by binding to this protein which blocks the replication fork and halts the process. Termination occurs when replication forks moving, moving in opposite direction meets topological constraints like DNA supercoiling and protein-protein interaction between helicases, premises and polymerases help regulate termination. DNA polymerase 1 also plays a role in replication, repair and RNA processing. Termination is the final uh, process of replication which ends the replication. And finally, references. If you have more doubts, you can reference these things to have a better clarity. And uh, thank you.